guys, my name is John Bechtold. Um, mm-hmm. This is the first episode of a new series I'm doing called Onset. Onset is basically what I do on an everyday basis, uh, or nearly everyday basis as a filmmaker. I'm gonna kind of use this series to highlight my more exciting shoots and showcase kind of like the cooler work that I've done, I think. So if you're interested in following along on something like that, it'd be awesome if you'd let me know in the comments and uh, do so further by subscribing to this channel. So this is episode one. Today I'm going to talk about the first big trip I did with Yuko Media, which is the job that uh, I took this year of school off to pursue. If you guys don't know, I took this year off to pursue my passion as a filmmaker. I'll mainly be working with Yuko Media over the next year. So yeah, about a week ago we flew out to LA for my first big project with them. This is an awesome opportunity and I'm so excited to be working with such great people. Uh, so this job that we went to LA for was a film about disability awareness. It's a really, really cool opportunity, and I, I hope it's going to lead to a lot more work like this, a lot more traveling work, uh, a lot more work where I get to experience new places and meet new people. So like I said, awesome opportunity, and I hope it leads to more like it. So we're producing this film for a foundation which I'll later disclose, and uh, I'll keep this channel updated uh, with uh, progress on this film and when it's released and all that stuff. So day one of the trip, Bianca, uh, one of the people I work for, and I got in a car, left Rochester, drove to Buffalo to catch our flight and meet up with Mike from Gearhead, who is another shooter on this trip. Mike's been doing this for a really long time, super experienced filmmaker. He helped the production go a lot more smoothly than it would have if he wasn't there. We were really, really trying to keep all of our bags under 50 pounds to save the $100 extra charge for an overweight bag. Mike loaded everything up to like between 48 and 49 pounds. It was so unbelievably precise. Uh, he was right on the money with everything and uh, we didn't end up having to pay over his fees. He used his home scale to pre-weigh the bags to make sure that they weren't gonna go over 50 pounds. So anybody out there who's a frequent traveler, uh, frequent flyer, and you don't know that tip already, just if you have a home scale or something, you can weigh your bags, make sure it's under 50 pounds or 45 pounds or whatever the limit is, and you'll save yourself $100, or at least that's what the charge was for JetBlue. It's crazy if you go over like five pounds, you're uh, instantly charged $100 fee, $100 extra fee for flying. So we are lucky enough to avoid that, even though we had a bunch of light stands, heavy lights, heavy gear, uh, lucky enough to avoid it. So got on the flight, First I had a hall seat, but I uh, finagled my way into a window seat, got some cool got some cool takeoff shots, got some cool landing shots. Landed in LA about 8 o'clock after the time change. Picked up the rental car and drove to our Airbnb right off the Hollywood Strip. We are all super tired from our flight and kind of jet lagged a little bit, even though it was only a three hour transition. Uh, it was 11 o'clock where we were at home and grabbed some pizza, just kind of went to bed and uh, woke up early for the First day of shooting. We got up, grabbed some breakfast, and went straight to a uh, friend of Marley Matlin's house where we conducted the first interview with Marley Matlin and Danny Woodburn. Marley Matlin's a pretty big name in the deaf community and in Hollywood in general. She's an incredibly talented Academy Award winning actress and uh, it's pretty awesome to meet her. So showed up early for the shoot, got everything set up. Marley showed up and uh, chatted with her for a bit. I ended up actually kind of becoming friends with her and uh, made, from what I can tell, a pretty good first impression on her. Because of that first impression that we made, she linked us up with a bunch of her friends in Hollywood and we were able to get a, a lot more content than we would have been able to if we hadn't made that first impression. First impressions are so important in filmmaking. Uh, coming off super polite and super respectful, just being a good person is one of the most important things in filmmaking. A lot of times on a shoot, you're only going to see the people for uh, a day to, in this case, three days at most. Uh, so basically everything you do, you're always meeting new people, always working with new clients. Everything is super based on first impression. And you've got to be good at making a good first impression in order to succeed in this industry. I'm lucky enough to be working with some really friendly, really great people. I've learned a lot about dealing with different clients uh, just in these first few days working with Yuko. Uh, how to handle people, how to just how to conduct myself in a professional environment. It's been an awesome experience. So wrapped up the shoot with Danny Woodburn and Marley. Went out, grabbed some lunch and came back and filmed them all having dinner, uh, getting some b-roll, them all interacting. Just some stuff to overlay in the film to create some more visual interest. So we wrapped up the dinner shoot and then we went straight to a friend of Jake's house. Uh, 
downtown LA and flew a drone off of this rooftop, which was insanely beautiful. Uh, seeing the cityscape of LA at night uh, from such a high up place and then flying a drone even higher than we were. Uh, it was an incredible experience. The city is beautiful from above. It's really funny, you know, going out and filming after you spent an entire day filming. It's it's pretty cool to have turned uh, a passion into an income uh, and have your passion basically be your day job. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be able to say that I love what I do so much that when I'm done doing it, I want to go out on my free time and do it some more. I love filmmaking and I'm so unbelievably happy to be in the position that I'm in. So after that, it was super, super late. I was also still kind of jet lagged a little bit and uh, I went home and just passed out on the couch. I was so tired. The next day we got up early again, went to an elementary school for the deaf, which was located right in LA. Uh, Marley went there to talk with some of the kids from the elementary school and kind of hope to act as an inspiration to them, to show them that disabilities don't have to really hold you back at all and to show how far she's come and, you know, just kind of just act as an inspiration in general to them. It was awesome to see Marley interacting with the kids and uh, to see how down to earth she was. There's a lot of preconceived notions out there about Hollywood stars, but uh, from what I've experienced so far, they're just normal people just like us. It's kind of a, kind of a neat thing to realize. So uh, after we wrapped up at the elementary school, we headed over to Danny Woodburn to get a little bit more content from him. Um, the shoot went so well with him the first day, he invited us to his home and to get a little bit more interview material. So because everything went so well with Marley, she had us go link up with the executive producer of a show that she stars in called Switched at Birth. They're having a premiere party for the new season at their house, uh, having some pizza, live tweeting about the show. We are just kind of getting some B-roll of them and, uh, and we got some interviews of the two executive producers of the show that Marley works in to try to get some footage of people who actually work with her on a day-to-day -day basis. Oh, this is really crazy. All these people were so dedicated to raising awareness to this cause that they let four random strangers into their beautiful, insanely expensive home. Uh, it was truly incredible to meet such caring people. So the next morning, Jake and I woke up at 4 a.m. You know, as I said before, it's so awesome to have your job be your passion uh, and actually be excited to wake up at 4 a.m. to go to your work. I don't know many people who can say that they do that every day. So although the sunrise was kind of a bust, it was super foggy and just misty over the city, couldn't see it super well. It was still beautiful for us to watch. Uh, awesome to watch the sunrise over LA. So then we grabbed some breakfast and headed over to Aunt Sweeney's house in Beverly Hills. It was insane being there. The shot I got for the interview had Elon Musk, the owner of SpaceX, and Tesla's house in the background. And Sweeney was a former co-chair of the Disney Media Group and the president of the Disney ABC Television Group. She was a president while shows that my generation grew up on were produced. It was really an experience to meet somebody who had that large of an influence on such a massive group of people. And then to realize that she's, again, just a normal person like the rest of us. Just a super down-to-earth friendly lady. So then we spent the rest of the day shooting some B-roll for the film uh, all over Hollywood and some of the Santa Monica Pier. But you can check out a quick montage I did of that if you're interested. Linked in the description. I think it's one of my favorite montages I've ever made, so I'd be stoked if you check it out. So that night on the pier, met this really, really big Pokemon Go YouTuber uh, named Mystic7. He let me use some of the drone footage in the montage so thanks for that. So after we wrapped up at the pier, we headed over to LAX and caught our flight back home to Rochester. And that just about wraps up the first big trip with Yuko. This is such an awesome experience. I met so many beautiful people and learned an endless amount. This is the first week off of school and I definitely learned more filming than I ever would have in a school environment. I'm really loving this new path I've chosen and I've never been happier in my life. So if you're interested in seeing the film we made, I'll be keeping the channel updated with info on that. And if you want to see more episodes of On Set, I would be stoked if you would uh, like this video, let me know in the comments, or subscribe to this channel. So that just about wraps up episode one of On Set. Thanks for watching. Later.